Hey guys, LRP Outdoors here with another video. In today's video, we're starting up a new series called Bushcrafting Stealth. This will be episode one. We're going to scout out a new bushcrafting spot. It's stealth because, like, technically you're not allowed to have fires here, but, like, people do it anyways. You can see, southern Ontario, it's a little nippy. We got snow now. I'm um, wearing a whole bunch of military clothing, so you can kind of treat this like a military hiking adventure. I'll get back to you when we get further into the woods. Alrighty guys, so now we're at the trailhead. This is where the trail technically starts. Uh, objective right now is to find some birch bark for a fire later. That way, because all I have on me is a ferrocerium rod. And I could use um, shavings, but this is the only knife I brought with me today. So, uh, yeah, catch back with you if you find some. Alrighty guys. So I just want to take a quick moment to run down like the gear I'm wearing and why I'm wearing it. So basically, I just have like a polyester sweater with a pair of um, the previous issued Canadian military BDU pants. I then have a pair of leather hiking boots on and then like a just a normal ass police hat. So the reason why, and the underneath I just have like your normal thermal base layer. The reason why is because I know it's only going to be negative 2 degrees today. And I don't want to sweat. You can notice that on my backpack, I don't have a jacket. Because I know that if I put the jacket on, I'm going to start to sweat too much. And then, eventually, when I sit down later on today, I'm just going to get cold. So, it's just not a smart thing when you know it's only going to be negative 2 degrees to fully bundle up. Unless you have that pack space to put that coat in there. Or you know you're going to be stopping for a lengthy amount of time. Just a quick tip. I just wanted to let you guys know that. I'm going to be back on the road. So if you guys didn't believe me on my last video, that's the sign I'm talking about. Yeah, so here's a really easy way to track. See how we have, so say the snow wasn't here, but we saw this leaf litter all over the thing. Since it did snow earlier, it should be wet, which means this shit should be very, like, moldable. So, if you see it pushed out of the way or skidded, it means someone or some things walked on it. In our case today, if you were to see footprints in the snow or, like, it's kicked around like that, you know for a fact somebody's walked here. In our case, we're good today. Nobody has been here. Thank God. You guys, so as you can tell, something has been right here. Now, by the way, that you have the two big fronts and then the two little backs. My guess is this is probably a rabbit. Just because a rabbit, it'll, it'll have the two big legs in the front and the two little legs in the back. And like, if you compare that to that, now the other option could be a squirrel. So if you're tracking, you would want to set a snare from this tree to this tree and put it right there in the middle because. As you can tell, there's multiple tracks, not just one. So you can tell that multiple squirrels or rabbits have used this trail back and forth. Just a little tip. So see, we have these tracks here. Now, I can tell by, see how it's pointed? You can tell that that's a coyote, because the dogs would be more rounded. Whereas a coyote is going to come to a point. So you can look for, like, a point. And so you can tell that coyotes walked along this trail. Pot. I can tell it's not been chasing that rabbit because of how close it is together. So you can tell that it's walking this trail. Whereas the rabbit, the rabbits are running this trail. So it's possible that it was chasing and then lost the rabbit somewhere between that and this. Just a little heads up if you're ever like, you have to hunt for a survival situation or you're just out tracking the animals period. Okay, so we finally found some birch bark. I'm gonna collect some of this up, like some good pieces like this, and then I'll get back to you when we are either getting off this trail or finding a new spot. So a common thing you're gonna find is when you're in cedar forest like this, birch bark tends to, not birch bark, but birch trees tend to grow a lot in this kind of like area. So typically you won't find a whole lot of like white birch, 
but like a lot of silver birch and uh, that that genre of birch, you're gonna find a lot more in this kind of forest because just because of the soil, those are the easier trees to grow in this kind of acidic soil. It's just a heads up when you're surviving, you need some kind of fire starter. So if you guys remember from the previous I think it's the second last video we made, the day hike video. We took the trail this way to go to the river. Today we're going to go bushwhacking this way. I know there's a cedar thicket on the edge of a swamp. Hopefully we can get to there. If not, we'll just turn back and we'll go to the same old spot. So I found the spot. So basically, the trail is 100 yards that way, okay? I know that for a fact. The trail, if I keep following this woods, it'll loop up again with the trail. So I found this little cedar thicket here kind of secluded there's nothing for a while behind us nothing for a while in that direction we should be okay just to you know chill out start up a little fire just warm ourselves up and i'm gonna eat this really weird granola bar that i found at the grocery store catch back with you when i'm lighting the fire all right you guys so basically we're doing stealth bushcraft so we didn't use a saw we didn't use an axe i have the axe with me I'm choosing not to use it for the purpose of being quiet and stealthy. So basically, we got our kindling, our base, and our, like, what do you call it? Like, fuel, kind of. Then our ignition system, which is just going to be a ferrocerium rod. That way we can just go light that, put that on top. A-okay, okay then we'll get our granola bar. Have a drink. Let it burn out for a bit, and then we'll get to move back to the car. All right, guys, so my phone's actually about to die to 5%. I finally got the fire going. Wow, difficult, don't know why. But we're gonna try this. It's a vegan, non-GMO, organic, peanut butter and chocolate chip bar. Oh, and gluten-free, can't forget that. It looks like raw cookie dough. Let's try it though. Mmm. Tastes like nothing. It actually has no taste. Yes. Anyways, I'm about to wrap this video up. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next video. It'll be a camping video. An overnight in the bushcraft shelter. I'm going to scrap the idea for finding a new bushcraft camp here. It's just not working out. I'm just going to leave this to be my hiking area. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Catch you in the next one.